Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Forward Life is self-realization. Every birth is divine. We are born anew every morning. My wish is that you may catch the gleam, be freed from limitations, and enter upon your boundless possibilities. Your endowments are so rich and rare. There is no other person in the world just like you. You have genius, which if brought forth into the sunlight, would glorify with brilliant inspiration a thousand lives. You have insight that, if it were energized, would make the desert blossom as the rose. You have initiative that once illuminated would create an empire fairer than any ever raised in marble. You have harmony lying latent in the vast octaves of your being, which if awakened into melody would soothe, comfort, restore, and purify the passions of the world. You have beauty, matchless in forms of grace, which if breathed into marble or spread in soul colors upon the canvas, would adorn the palaces of kings. You have thoughts, which if given expression, would burn and shine through countless ages and bear their messages of hope and power to fainting multitudes. To bring you into the throne room of your being, that you may awaken in self-realization, is why I have prepared this course of lessons. Should you give five minutes a day to them, in a year you will know the joy there is in life, in power, and in service. The Author End of Forward Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 1 Supreme Control of Conditions Conditions are thought made. Change your thought, and you will change your condition. To agonize and struggle in a bad condition is like struggling in quicksand. You get in deeper. Tell your bad conditions to another and you multiply them. If the heavens are falling and the earth is slipping under your feet, grab a big Turkish towel, walk briskly into the supreme sanctuary of the body, the bathroom, take a thorough salt water bath with a few drops of perfume in it to awaken your self-respect. Then in a darkened, quiet room, take a good sleep of 10 to 15 hours. Then rise and eat slowly, quietly and happily, some nourishing food. God himself could do nothing with Elijah until he had given him a long sleep and a good meal. Then Elijah went forth and crowned a king, appointed a prophet, established a kingdom, and rode home in chariots of fire. Once you make a start, the world is at your command. Let go of the past. Stop the foolish thinking that conditions hold you. It is you holding on to conditions. Quit your self-pity, blaming others, and saying you are the victim of circumstances. Stop whining and begin singing. Then your feet will be loosed from the stocks and the iron gates open outward before you. Look away from yourself. Is your will asleep at the wheel? Awake it. See if you are sailing or drifting. Set the compass of your mind to new thoughts, fresh purposes, selfless desires. Fill your sails with boundless hope, and let your daily voyage spell service in a big way. You are not a chip on the river of life. You are a supreme master in a universe of facts. You think you are stuck in the harbor mud, but it is only that the tide is out. Command your will to put up the sails. God will send you wind and tide to bear you out of the stale, sordid mental and bodily conditions you are living in, give you wider horizon and a limitless ocean of experience. If anybody does not wish to sail with you, leave them on the shore. Let go of your past. Break away from conditions that hold you in slavery. Seek new scenery, form new surroundings, begin a new supreme life. Keep your body supreme. Go back to nature, be a fine animal. Get into the sunshine, the silent woods, the open fields. 
Magnetize your body by walking through the dew barefooted, by sleeping on the grass, or half buried in the sand. Tuberculosis, rheumatism, insomnia are unknown to wild animals. Our bodies are sick and weak because we have denatured ourselves. Make friends of the wild animals. They will teach you how to keep well. They have not a single case of nervous prostration in all their vast forest home. Learn to relax. Drop your tension and check your confusion. Stop a few minutes sometime in the day and quiet your nerves. Rest your muscles. Calm your senses. Soothe your thoughts. Somewhere in the sunshine or under the shade of an old apple tree. Eat simply, slowly, nuts, dates, cereals, fruits. Drink abundantly of water between meals. Dress less somber. Study your personal appearance. Give it harmony. Keep your body well groomed. A bath and haircut will change the outlook of life. Quit habits that weaken the body. Never talk about your bodily weaknesses, illness, or condition, nor listen to those of others. Criticize your body and it will fail you. Praise your body and it will serve you. Take air baths, cold water plunges, or cold water sponges every morning. Fix your mind upon having a sound and energized body and you will attract it. Exercise, walk, run, play, work, and learn to rest. Change your habits of living. Cut out the grouch. Stop nagging. You're sour because your pores are stopped up. Get a buck saw and take a sweat. You're morbidly blue because your solar plexus has gone to sleep. Give it half an hour of internal vibration. Don't knock the weather. Like it. Get into it. Let it put iron into your blood. Plunge into a storm. It will act as a tonic on your spirit. A dip in the ocean will add magnetism to your body. Your body is a mighty fine engine of marvelous energy. Overfed, underfed, overburdened, neglected, abused, weakened, shamefully talked about, Yet year after year it goes on generating the divinest thing in the universe, life. It transmutes profane elements into divine energy, washes a river of blood free of tons of poison, supports a brain that builds and rules limitless empires, sustains a vision that dissolves darkness into light, the unknown into the known, upholds the image of, and is, the temple of the living God. Your body is supreme. Keep it divine. Strip your body bare and lie in the sunshine. Let it soak deeply into the tissue. It will magnetize your body and renew it with youth. Take these sun baths every sunny day possible by lying on a couch before a large window, or even better, out in the open air. If you want a magnetic body that is supple, elastic, and youthful, Give it sun baths and air baths daily. Keep your mind supreme. Your mind is limitless. You were born to lead, not to be always led. Think for yourself. Do your own planning. Make new plans. Train your mind to think alone. Misery is rust on a mind that has stopped working. Train your mind to delight people. Don't follow the crowd but step softly among human hearts. Train your mind to think big. Expand your mind until it encircles the universe. Stop fussing over little things, over useless people, and fill your mind with new ideals and fresh purpose. Stop wailing over flowers that will never blossom on the north side of your house. Go around to the south side and make a new garden. You have a temperament that is likely to be misunderstood. That's fine. So did Savonarola, Columbus, Galileo, Luther, Whitfield, Emerson, Lincoln, and Christ. Seven cities fought for Homer, dead, 
through whose streets the living Homer begged his bread. The reputation of Christ was just the opposite of his character. These stood thinking their brave thoughts on the horizon where truth asks you to stand. You are better than you think, or as good. You are the sum total of your thinking. Build thought palaces, not mud huts. Create, originate, produce new ideas. Beware of dead monotony, it kills the brain. Unfetter your thoughts from notions, prejudices, and limitations. Think well of yourself. Think well of what you have. Think well of what you do. Think invincibly. Think persistently. Think with unflinching resolve. Concentration is getting at a thing, thinking it, planning it, preparing for it, working on it, doing it. Your conditions, mental, physical, financial, are thought made. Fill your mind with different thoughts and you will have different conditions. Thoughts gather around you the things you want. When you stop thinking of them, they pass away. Thoughts are seeds. They produce after their kind. A little thought will shake off useless conditions and confused environment. Think fun into your daily events. Don't be over serious. It breeds disease germs, just as anger and hate induce cancer, tumor, and liver troubles. Start a hurricane of jollity. Break loose in a thunderstorm of mirth. It will clear the atmosphere under a roof, just as a thunderstorm clears the air over the roof. On the other hand, there is a season to weep. Never smother your emotion. To choke it back stifles the heart. Lift the floodgates and let your tears water the garden of your heart. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That is the life. Be renewed every morning, for each day is a new life, a fresh world, the beginning of eternity. Think your thought created enemies into thought created friends. Think your thought created suspicions into thought created confidences. Thought has drawn you into your conditions it will pull you out. Your soul, your mind, your body cannot become ugly, useless, imprisoned, so long as you think supreme harmony, dominion, and love. Thought makes your body a hovel, your mind a madhouse. Or, thought makes your body a temple, and your mind a shrine where angels commune with you. Environment, conditions, circumstances are not your masters, they are materials out of which thought makes the beautiful mosaics of character. Light the candle of a new thought and diligently sweep every corner of your mind and you shall find the rare treasure, happiness. Put fun into your thinking. Do not take yourself so serious. Put the red blood of mirth into your daily thinking. Keep your will supreme. Your will is divine energy, therefore, it is a supreme power. Christ said, Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. It is inertia that suffers. Fate, fear, and doubt are children of the imagination. The power of the will dissolves them into mist. Will power into your being. Will power into your work. Will power into your ambitions. Will power into your expressions will power into your words, and you shall be a fellow workman with God, a master builder that needeth not be ashamed. Your will gives you infinite clearness, infinite strength, infinite ideals, infinite aspirations for infinite realities. Your will tells you that if there is anything today that seems to you too good to be true, believe it, endeavor toward it, Reach forth to receive it, and tomorrow it will be true. Will is the engine in the depths of the ship that drives it through the buffeting waves and storm to the distant harbor. Will puts your backbone where your wishbone is now. Will puts iron into your blood, tightens up your vertebrae, and makes you a self-starter. You may have lost your battle. Your will stands ready for another battle campaign. You miss an opportunity, 
your will stands ready to open the door to a hundred new ones. Delay is the mother of most failures. One thing worse than a quitter is the person afraid to begin. Your will gives you purpose and makes you stick to it. Get grit for a new siege. Will makes desire. Will makes brains. Will gives decision. To decide means to cut, cut deep into the world of possibilities, cut out of your prison of difficulties, cut through your jungle of opposition, to liberty, to health, to success, to supreme power. Think, plan, do it. Will heals disease. Will drives poisons out of the system. Will makes the body immune. Will illuminates the brain with brilliant perception. Will sweeps misfortunes aside and rebuilds a nobler success. Julius Caesar trained his supreme will until it became the dominion of the Roman Empire. The goddess Diana said of Hercules, When I saw him, whether he sat or stood, I knew he was a god, so majestic as his will. Like the magnetic mountain in the Arabian Nights, your will can draw the nails from your enemy's ships, so they shall fall to pieces before they reach your shores. Will is a dynamic cosmic energy from whence eternal things proceed and immortal organisms are constructed. Will is the glory of the divine universe, and you are a part of that will. In your will sleep the oracles of prophecy. You were made master over this world. In your will is enthroned sovereignty, dominion, kingship. With force of will, Pygmalion carved his soul dream into the marble until its loveliness of form and grace became so real as to take on life and motion. With force of will, Dante created his hell, and with force of will, Milton created his paradise regained. Put your will into command. Start new. Realize that you are supreme. Get a mind picture of what you want, what you want to be, what you want to do, then actualize it. Get above doubts. Do not wait to be well, to be happy, to be rich. All of these will be added unto you. Climb out of your prison of doubts, worries, fears. Begin where you are. Let your will create even as God creates. He that believeth shall not perish, shall not abide in darkness, shall have the light of life, shall have everlasting life. All things are possible to him that believeth. Come down out of the gallery of supine hero worshippers. Get into the arena and be the hero. Quit the drivel of matinee idle longing, and get on to the stage of life, and get the bouquets for yourself. The world is waiting to ring up the curtain for your star part in life. You can work miracles. A miracle is a wonder, a marvel, a supernatural occurrence, a result obtained by suspension of natural processes. You can do that any day. The miracle is that so few do it. You know Ibsen's play, The Dollhouse, how the wife forged a note, raised the money to send her husband to regain his health, how he did regain it, returned to great prominence and wealth as a banker. Then the blackmailer threatened to reveal the crime, how the husband rushed to his wife in anger that she should have done such a thing, that it meant ruin to him in his high position, how the wife replied, Why, I expected the miracle that you would save me as I saved you, that you would say that you did it. If he only had, what a marvelous, what a wonderful, what a supernatural thing it would have been. Christ made whole and useful a withered hand. People say, oh, that I could do such a wonderful thing. Well, why don't you? See the withered hands around you, a young woman with a beautiful voice but no means to cultivate it. You have a thousand or so in the bank. You can save that voice to a world that needs song. A young man with a fine mind, helpless to go through college. You have means to give that mind to a world in power and usefulness. The natural thing is for you not to do it. The supernatural, the miracle, 
is that you are divine enough to do it. A man, a woman, is forsaken, friendless, cruelly judged by the world, their goodness blasted, their spirit crushed, their hearts bleeding, their lives made useless, withered. The natural thing is to avoid such, stand aloof, be quite scornfully indifferent. The miracle would happen if you went to them, lifted them up, restored them to society. I have said, avoid useless people, I mean selfish, lazy, purposeless, aimless people. Sir Humphrey Davy worked a miracle when he took the boy Faraday out of a stable loft and gave him a chance to cultivate his genius. The Sistine Chapel is Angelo's miracle. When the band on the deck of the Titanic, under the pale light of the morning stars, played nearer my God to thee, to give hope and strength to men and women struggling to be saved, each player, as the voice of his melody was forever hushed behind the shining emerald gates in the crystal tomb of the sea, went down, crowned with the glory of a selfless miracle. The natural thing would have been for them to have frantically fought to save themselves, what superb opportunities to work miracles have passed you? What magnificent possibilities are still right before you? The cripple is always at your gate beautiful. Are you divine enough, wonderful enough, marvelous enough, supernatural enough to say, Such as I have, give I unto thee. Do it quickly. Do it and you shall know the daily joy of hearing the Father say, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased. If there is any one person on this earth to whom I take off my hat and wait until they safely pass, it is a school teacher. The most obscure teacher, back in the country hills, unknown, unthought of, unpraised, but with loving patience, unfolds the secrets of knowledge to little frowsy-headed boys and girls can look into her mirror at evening and behold the face of an angel. Flowers cast their wealth upon the vacant air, and rich fathers oft cast their wealth upon the vacant air. Some people are so sensitive that if you call them honey, they will break out with hives the next morning. Do not divorce your husband because he has cold feet. Perhaps he got them since you were married. Christ stopped every funeral that came his way and sent the mourners home singing. Funeral sermons were too sad for him to preach. Every sick room he entered became a health resort. He made graveyards unpopular. Many a lonely bachelor looking back over the stretch of years recalls the charming moonlit nights when the cool summer air was perfumed with fresh old-fashioned flowers and he looked into the loving eyes of his sweetheart recalls how the crimson glow of youth flushed her velvet cheeks as he took her warm hand in his, recalls sadly that if he had only given that hand a square deal, played it in the game of life, he would have a full house now. Would you like to become young? Then tap new reservoirs of youthful thoughts. Irrigate your alkali desert from the fountains of youth. Become youthfully active in some new field of work. Vanderbilt added ten million to his fortune after he was eighty. Wordsworth earned the laureateship at seventy-three. Thayer's established the French Republic and became its first president at seventy-two. Verdi wrote Falstaff at eighty. Sir Walter Scott was six hundred thousand dollars in debt when he was fifty-five, but through his own efforts he paid all and made himself a lasting name. Book knowledge is not all. A wealthy, fond father, fearing his son would be contaminated by college life, had him educated at home. When he was twenty-one, he took him to ride through the streets of the city. They passed a female seminary, just as the doors opened and a crowd of young women came out. The dear boy grabbed his father's arm and cried, What are those? His father replied, They are only Goslins. Later in the day, the fond father said, My son, you have obeyed me, have faithfully completed your education. Now I am ready to spend $50,000 to give you the highest ambition of your life. 
the boy looked up in glad wonder and said, Oh, Dad, give me a goslin. End of chapter 1 Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 2 Supreme Control of Age Youth is eternal. Nature never grows old. The flowers that bloomed in Eden are blooming today, just as lovely, just as sweet, just as fresh and unchanged. The roses your life mate brings home to you have the same fragrance as the roses Adam brought to Eve, if he thought of it. The lovely stars that glitter in the azure fields above you tonight have the same loveliness that gleamed in tremulous glory down upon the shepherds beyond Bethlehem. The radiant, life-giving rays of the sun that ten thousand, thousand years ago warmed Mother Earth into vernal spring life are the same life-giving rays that shall bring again the spring tide. Life never grows old. It only changes form. Your life is perpetual. Then your youth may be perpetual. The human race is ever young. Its units fall off. You should be younger at sixty than at sixteen, because you have more life. Growing old is a habit. People travel along the years up the hill of life, till they reach a certain point where they begin to think they must be growing old. Think it's time to sag. Think it's time to droop. Think it's time to begin the process of decay. Then begin to talk about it, to write letters about it to feel around for it, to look for it in others. Finally the habit they inherited from the race is on, and they are old. Life is endless, but you can think it short. The power of an endless life is within you, but by thinking you can turn it to the white ashes of old age. Think youth, and you stay young. Youth is growth. Keep growing, and you keep young. A new idea will make you feel younger. Develop it, and it will develop you. Quicken your mental throb with new ideas. Begin now. Stop talking about being too old to grow. You pass by trees daily, a hundred, two hundred years old. They are still growing. The rose bush on a wall in China is supposed to be over a thousand years old. It bears more roses now than when it was a mere slip of a vine of only one hundred. Gladstone at eighty-two was a growing statesman and elected Prime Minister of England for the fourth time. Cato at eighty began to study Greek and renewed the youth of his mind. Donald Davis is a growing hunter at one hundred and three. Goddard Diamond was a growing teacher of health when he was one hundred and eleven. I know a bright, cheery lady who is just beginning a new study for decorating China, along with her household cares, and she is eighty-eight. Also another woman who has taken up a new process of enlarging drawings into watercolors, and she is eighty-one years young. The fig tree withered when the master of life found it not growing, producing, creating. When you stop growing you will wither by the same law. Grow something, create something, produce something, and the law of youth will pervade your being. Youth is observing the law. Observing the law of health, the law of mind, the law of growth, the law of harmony, the law of production, the law of expression, the law of beauty, the law of selflessness. Keep your bodily forces up. Rebuild destroyed tissue. Keep the system free of waste. Stop poisoning your body with anger, hate, jealousy, fear. Keep your mind sweet. Think cheerfully. Avoid mental turmoil and excitement. Two great enemies of youth are worry and fear. The next is selfishness. Think every morning when you rise. This new day is new life. It is fresh from the hand of God. It is mine to use. I will increase it unto the perfect day. Grow in each day, and make each day grow. Check discord. Quit useless discussion, for it weakens and withers. 
stop quarreling, check complainings, root criticism out of your life. You are bigger than these things. Get into harmony. You are the world upon worlds, universe unto universe. Study your words to make them have beauty, your walk to have grace, your personality to make it magnetic, your smile to give courage and comfort, your presence to have it healing, helping, inspiring. If there be any virtue in whatsoever things are lovely, think on those things. Youth is loving work. Like what you do. Do what makes you and others happy. Enter your daily work with joy. Adjust it until you do like it. Learn to love work for the happiness it brings. Put joy into your work in the morning, and you will find it multiplied into happiness at night. Work is a law of youth. Inaction is decay. Inertia is death. Men and women do not usually lose their positions. They drive their positions away from them. The law of work will not stand personal abuse any more than the law of beauty will endure brutality. Form an ideal of your work. Make a mental picture of it. Simplify it. Orderly it. Beautify it then glorify it. Start the process in the slightest degree and you will get a result. Put a new shock absorber on your disposition. Bring your fine sensibilities to your work. Be big morally, be deep mentally, and work with confident expectation. Put rules and system into your daily task. Exercise your self-control, your self-possession, self-mastery, March up to your task with efficiency, backed by a dominant will. Realize your supreme personality in your work. Put the absolute I am into your purpose of toil. Put dominating decision, I have decided, into your efforts. Put invincible determination, I will, into your complex problem. Put irresistible confidence, I shall achieve, into your ardent desires. You will then love work. When you come to love work, you will not exhaust yourself in it. You will not tire your brain and body with its friction. Because you will not work with selfish purposes, but work to enrich the world. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Youth is supreme cheerfulness. To be funless is to be lifeless. Good cheer is the tonic of youth. If you are so sad you cannot laugh at something, then laugh at nothing. Laugh in the world, you know it. An ounce of smiles will give you more real life than seven tons of solemn collie. Cheerfulness and prosperity go hand in hand. Bathe in mirth. Frolic in some sunshine daily, even if you live in Pittsburgh and have to make your own sunshine. Make fun. Don't always buy it. You can cure disease and kill the devil with laughter. Cultivate an infectious laugh. Mirth makes work easy. Read humor and learn to tell it. Practice telling a good funny story. Be a quick wit. There is a bright side to everything in this world, even to a dark lantern. The end of the film is sure to be jolly. Good cheer attracts good luck. Cheer up. If you haven't a smile, get one of somebody and wear it as your own. Let thine heart cheer thee. Give it outlet. Go to sleep with a smile on your face, and you will awaken with a joy in your heart. Let your humor be rich humor. Laughter is the cipher key to a man. It is one of the most delightful sounds of earth. Most utterly lost is the day you laugh not. Mirth clears the mirrors of the mind. A person who does not laugh is not healthy. A merry heart doeth good, like a medicine. To forget your sorrow, begin to cultivate joy. Keep away from sad people, or you will be sad. Stop rehearsing your grief, you only enlarge it. If you suffer grief, find someone in trouble and cheer them. Encourage them, help them, and you will deliver yourself. You will comfort yourself when you comfort another. 
you cannot lose a loved one, though absent from the earth plain, they are nearer than ever. Life and love never change. Death is an unreality thought made. Our friends take on new embodiment that is glorified in life and spirit. When you believe you were created in his image and are a partaker of the divine nature, it is easier to believe you shall arise in his likeness. Some day we shall all believe we have not disfigured, morally broken natures, but divine natures, supreme in limitless power. Traditions, teachings, education, environment of generations of thinking have disfigured, morally broken, sin-burdened humanity. All are thought-created conditions, thought-made limitations, thought-made original sins, system-cultivated human wrongs, institutionalized teachings of error, but you should know the universe is one undivided soul. You are a yoke fellow with God. You are a part of one complete life. You are a lobe of the infinite brain. You are a supreme personality of absolute personality. Nothing that has life is God damned. Where love is only a dream, the marriage is an alarm clock. If you cannot endure your mother-in-law, you can begin your plans at once to live alone when your children are married. A quarrel between two people to settle things is a good deal like a dog fight in a flower bed. The only things that get settled are the flowers. Nearly always, when you hear the lusty wail of a boy with energy plus filling the air, you can look in at the window and find a woman's hand at the seat of his trouble. You can overwork your notion of neatness. A woman in Vermont crippled her usefulness for life by mopping a hole through her kitchen floor and falling into the cellar. End of chapter 2 Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 3 A Supreme Daily Life Method A Central Plan Do your mental work in the morning your manual work in the afternoon. Do not dictate letters in the afternoon. From 10 to 12 in the morning is best. The brain is usually at low ebb at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Do not have your desk so that you have to look sidewise at persons approaching you. It blunts your personality. By no means have people enter behind you. It is the most negative psychic influence possible. Let your position in your office be such that when anyone approaches, your eyes will fall upon them as near a straight level as possible. Plan your workroom for efficiency, no matter how small, how large, or if it be but a bench. Put your character stamp on the plan of the work you do. Go to that work as a king goes to his throne. Centralize your work. Plan it. Work your plan. Have a system of order. Set your mind in order first. If you are living as I have taught in the lessons that have gone before, then your mind will assume a supreme command of order almost at once. Classify what you do. Keep matters separate. Do the big things first. As you classify, drop the non-essentials. Weed out the useless. Never spend a minute of your morning hours winding up a string or folding a piece of wrapping paper. Do that when your brain tide has ebbed out in the afternoon, or not at all. Don't hunt for a pin, or sharpen a pencil, or manicure your nails after you reach your work of the day. Classify your movements, eliminate the useless, energize your movements, move with enthusiasm, put elastic cheer into your step, Wear rubber heels of quiet manners. Simplify your work. Keep it straight. After a little, it will keep you straight. Don't fall over your work, nor step on it, or sit on it. Simplify by stopping the waste of words, waste of material, waste of time. Jollify your work. Put fun into each day's round of toil. Be original in plans and ideas. Cultivate your efficiency. 
To all the above add mental energy, develop insight, grow new business brain cells. Do not overload your stomach with food, nor your body with clothing. Study directness, master application. At Niagara Falls, I saw two giant dynamos generating 25,000 horsepower. Their efficiency was kept in perfect balance by a little automatic nickel gate. Your efficiency is kept in balance by little invisible and automatic thought neurons. A clear brain is the test of efficiency. Plans, orders, system, application, give efficiency. Efficiency is positive thinking, freedom thinking, above fear thinking. Get out and keep out of negative thinking. Just as soon as you drop negative thinking, your mind will begin to rise to a new brilliance of expression. One big element in efficiency is silence. It is the strongest thing to be silent. Noise is emptiness, weakness, inefficiency. Silence is the law of greatness, noise the breaking of the law. Develop your power to rest. That person is wise who knows how to rest. It is a powerful thing to rest successfully. Overfed persons or animals do not rest, they are stupefied. Rest is filling your capacities with energy. Sleep knits up the raveled sleeve of care, or it should. Rest is relaxing the nerves and muscles. Rest is reconstructing broken down cellular tissues. Rest is restringing the harp of the senses, retuning the rhythmic harmonies of the spirit. Rest lets down the tension. When you sit down, let what you sit on hold you. When you lie down, do not try to hold yourself on the bed. Rest is the opposite of labor. Rest is recreation. Rest with sleep is a divine restorative. When you cannot rest or sleep, you are expending energy without production. Try this little code for rest and sleep. My mind is empty. My soul is at rest. Repeat it with your eyes closed and your body relaxed. Say it just as you would imagine the swing of the pendulum of an old-fashioned hall clock. I never knew it to fail of inducing sleep. Never rest or sleep with light falling on your eyes. Shut out the world and noise. Grow the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Do not sit down and wish for them, nor wait for someone to bring them to you. Even God will not bring them to you. Grow them, cultivate them, produce them. No power on this earth can defeat you, make you fail, or overthrow you if you fill your spirit with them. As you work, use them. Take them with you to the store, the factory, the shop, the mill, to your bench. Take them with you to the office, the counting room, the courtroom, and to your throne room. Take them with you to the battlefield, to the halls of justice, to the senate chamber, to the presidential chair. Take them with you through the streets, along the highways, and over the unbeaten paths of your life. Take them with you down the rivers and out into the storm-driven sea. Chain them to the wheel of your ship. Sail on through the starless night alone. Trust them, for they are the initiative of the Supreme in you. Train your voice. Take your snarling, growling, snapping, whining voice away into the jungle and leave it to the wild beasts. Take your sobbing, sniveling, trembling, dolorous, sanctimonious voice down into some dismal swamp and bury it. Train your voice as you would tune a harp. Your voice is an index of character. Keep it on the level. Let it speak as one having authority. Charm it with modulation. Make it ripple with music. Allow no thrust of anger to ruffle it. 
intensify it with determination strengthen it with courage give it dominion and power when other voices are hot and spumming around you keep your voice cool never allow your voice to become dull dubious uncertain shrinking or hollow voice tones that are round rhythmic full measured have a serene and reposeful voice look at what you speak reflect your soul in your voice let the manner of your voice be calm smooth collected but energized with positive forces have a cheerful voice a voice that makes one think of sunshine and smiles how to love relatives to love your relatives be away from home all you can to have them love you keep about 300 miles between you and them thousands of homes and lives are wrecked by two families of the same family trying to live under the same roof Noah would have floundered with the ark ten days after the flood started if he had not taken more than two out of any one family with him Cain would have never killed Abel if Adam hadn't made the fool blunder of trying to keep his two sons everlastingly with him of course there was some excuse in the fact that in those days New York and Paris were not brilliantly attractive cities if there is any one thing outside a church row that tickles the devil into a frenzy of laughter it is when a young married couple go home to live with the family there is about as much real-life joy and harmony in it as there would be in a jungle picnic of monkeys and parrots there is just one place where large families can dwell together peacefully the graveyard it is contrary to natural law that families of grown-ups should live together when a cub bear is old enough big enough to hunt for food and comes back after he once goes out his mother gives him a mauling that makes him feel he would rather starve than come back again does she love him of course she loves him to the limit of her instinct loves him to the point of pride that she wants him to be a brave daring self-reliant master of the forest when the whelps of a lion get to be more than playful kittens the mother leads them into the jungle slips away leaving them to hunt the young lions may return to the old home but their father and mother have moved away to a distant den to evolve their natures to become supreme denizens of the forest they must rely upon their own prowess take the eagle when the mother eagle by instinct knows the wings of her babies have become strong enough to support their bodies she pushes them out of the airy they fly or will be dashed to death on the rocks they always fly but you say human beings are not bears lions or eagles well humans could well afford to attend the nature college of the wild animals of the woods to learn the ethics of health happiness and the development of the individual treat your relatives royally then let them alone keep out of their affairs try to keep them out of your affairs be kind generous sympathetic but keep out of the danger zone insist upon living by yourself living your own life thinking your own thoughts playing your part in life's drama parents wish they could hold their children the way to hold them is to let go of them if you love them you will let go love is unselfish God sent his only son on the loneliest journey ever taken and he came back crowned with glory God can live with lots of people you and I can't Abraham amounted to something God said to him get thee out and he went out not knowing whither he stayed until he became the head of a people as numberless and brilliant as the stars of the heaven but Isaac hung around home lived on his father's greatness and the only real thing he did that was worth while was to redig some wells his father had dug before him the first time he saw his sweetheart rebecca whom another man had to go and get for him he lifted up his voice and cried like a boob he had become soft on the mutton and grape juice of his father tender little doves flit around the home coat 
but the eagle sweeps from sun to sun. Anyhow, in these modern days children are very largely bringing up their parents. To kill a quarrel, shut your mouth. There is a world of sense in the saying, sell your hammer and buy a horn. There is one place we can bear a boil and smile, on the other fellow's neck. Many people possess more than a thousand acres of possibilities, and have about half an acre under cultivation. The best way to exterminate mosquitoes would be to start a plan to cultivate them as a money-making commodity. Stop nagging, twitting, insinuating, suspecting those whose love you wish to hold. You assassinate love when you ridicule it. Temper is the yeast of personality. No man or woman ever rises in the world without it. A razor, knife, axe, or writer, actor, minister, without it, isn't worth a damn in any market. Never lose your temper, lose all things, but keep your temper. When I see people who are great stickers as to form or attitude in prayer, they remind me of my old neighbor, Saxby, who fell into Bill Smith's well. He said, The prayingest prayer I ever said was in that well standing on my head. Do you know the meanest thing about the worst boy on your street? I will tell you. It is the fact that you do not like him, and he knows it. God never made a mean boy. Parents have made some, towns have made some, and cities have made a host. End of chapter 3 Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 4 The Supreme Law of Success Selling Power Study out plans. Approach your customer or the public with a definite plan. Here is one of simple power. Attract the attention, secure the interest, carry the conviction, demand the decision. Then in any line of business, you will have your order book full. Selling power is confidence backed up by the will. Success is ambition and desire driven by the will. Do you desire success? How much? When you desire it, as a starving man has hunger for food, you will win. Want to attain your ambition? How much? When your ambition becomes a thirst, a burning, consuming thirst, such as the lost traveler has in the blistering sands of the desert, then you will achieve. What you want is not opportunity. The world is flooded with golden opportunities. What you want is not a fair chance. Chances gleam in your future sky fairer than the endless myriads of stars that encrust with glittering splendor the evening heavens. What you do want is concentration, confidence, self-reliance, desire, ambition, personal power. Power of Attraction Make your purpose brilliant. Keep it clear. Seek to energize it with positives. Do not lumber up your plan. Centralize it. Modify it. Create it as a necessity. Form it into the indispensable. Then embody yourself into it. See that nothing about you defeats or neutralizes attraction. Have a burning interest in your proposition. Look for fulfillment. Anticipate success. Make the world feel that you know you are right. Stop asking folks if they think you will succeed. Of course they do not, because they have not. Hold your mind relaxed in silence. Make your desire active. Set your wishes in motion. Confidence attracts confidence. Positives attract positives. Bring out your latent forces. They only need arousing. Think and act. Your mental attitude have faith in yourself. Arouse faith in others. Think in the affirmative. Assert your hope and confidence. Root out every doubt. Help someone out of their slew of doubt and despondency. Believe in the world, in life, in growth, in possibilities. 
let your faith be as big and bright as the sun. Cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Dwell in confidence. Hold fast your confidence and hope unto the end. Keep your mental attitude independent. Keep it brave. Think of money as a means, not as an end. Seek wealth for the power of service it gives. Have a generous mental attitude. Help others succeed. Banish fear, worry, indecision, timidity, irresolution, anxiety from your mental attitude. They paralyze effort. Trust yourself. Trust others. Have a mental attitude that is supreme, divine, and absolute. Spend your last dollar like a king. Gird the loins of your mind with I will, I can. All the mountains of difficulty will melt before your presence. Ambition and Desire Ambition is idealism. Desire is faith. You cannot have either without the possibility of their fulfillment. Desires come from supreme intelligence in the universe, and they are divine. Therefore, they are real, possible of positive realization. Keep them sacred. Let them become the ideals of your life. Make them glow with the fires of your energies. They spell success and victory. They will crown your life if you will breathe your life into them. Let your ambition make you irrepressible. Avoid reactionary influences. Keep away from dull, stupid, inactive people. Creative Force and Harmony Be original. Think original thoughts. Put them into form. Invent and produce. Create ideas. Feel complete in yourself. Do not stand in wonder at what others have done. Right at your feet lies a secret that will enrich the world and make you famous. A thinker discovered a substitute for the artist camel's hairbrush by taking the hair from inside a cow's ear. If you work in an office, think up some outdoor vocation. Grow something. Raise something. Get interested in animals. Study the market near you. Create, produce, or raise something to sell. If not for money, for the forces of life the work gives. It will keep you from habits, from speculating, from gambling, from politics and other evils. Build something. Raise chickens, pets, sheep, cattle, or grow flowers, fruits, berries. Work with nature. This is the very harmony of success. In it you will be in touch with universal intelligence, will get the inflow of infinite life, and through it will keep growing. Your latent powers. Take account of your personal abilities, your gifts, talents, forces, equipment. What percent are you using? Most people are not using over 20% of their capital of personal power. The 80% lies dormant. Why have only 20% of your share of life, success, harmony, and happiness when you should have 100%? There are big prizes awaiting your latent powers. At every turn of the way, you can read the sign, Wanted, Men with Power. There is an unexplored continent in your being. Go into it. Bring out its riches for yourself and for the world. Persistence and Planning A plan is a mighty source of power. Do not work and live hit or miss in your activities day by day. Have a plan. Sit in silence a few moments each morning and create a plan. You can double your efficiency. Think out a plan, open a way. Get effectual insight. Keep your plan under your cap and work it out. Persist in your plan. Stick to it. Never go sour or negative in your manner. Keep sweet. If your plan is blocked, dig in another direction. Build a new foundation. Shake off doubts and start new. Unless your success makes you happy, it is not success. 
deep at the heart of the universe lies happiness. Live closely to that heart in persistent power of service. Impersonate your desires. Impersonate greatness and you will become great. Impersonate loveliness and you will become lovely. Why do actors become matinee idols? They could readily marry a hundred times a month. It is quite impossible for an actor to remain unmarried. What is the secret? Can a person get it? Certainly. Here it is. Actors impersonate heroes, villains, model husbands, daring lovers, in a real way. They think, plan, and train themselves to impersonate the character. They make it so real that people think it must be a part of their nature. You can do it, young man, bachelor, widower. If you are only half a man, half a lover, impersonate a whole one. If you are so bashful that it makes you blush to walk with your best girl in the garden where the flowers are in bed, impersonate a dashing daredevil, scamp of fascination, and your sweetheart will faint from adorable bliss and fall into your arms. If you are a coward, impersonate a hero until you are one. Do not stand on one foot or bite your fingernails or tear the rim off your hat trying to tell a beautiful, healthy, 20th century young woman you love her. You'll be all to the mustard. Do something brave. Go hire a kid that is a good swimmer to fall into the lake as you and your sweetheart are walking past. Then throw back your shoulders and tear off your coat and leap in. The kid will get you to shore, but you'll be a hero in her eyes. Impersonate the hero and you will win the heroine. Young women, if you would marry a hero, impersonate beauty. Maiden lady of quite impossible age, if you would marry the best man in the world, impersonate youth and beauty. Dear languishing widow, if you would marry a real man, impersonate youth, beauty, and wealth. You will win. The odds are much against you here in the East, where in every state there are thousands and thousands of more women than there are men but you will win. Men follow actresses around the world because they impersonate love, passion, beauty, virtue, and nobleness. The men really think actresses must possess what they portray. You see, it is all a matter of thinking. It does not matter how many times a man has lost on the races. If he is a good sport, he will bet on the next horse that looks good to him. Women need to impersonate looking good better, best, not on occasions only, but all the time. Men like women who are good pals. So ladies, impersonate sympathy, kindness, patience, good fellowship, enthusiasm, in the things that interest men. If you belong to the citrus family, impersonate the peach. If you belong to the nettle family, impersonate the violet. You may be so homely that your face pains you, but think of the impersonations of beauty you can buy at the drugstore. Impersonate silence. A young lady in Philadelphia lost her voice, and she had 19 proposals that year. Impersonate form. You may be as angular as the streets in Boston, yet almost any department store will shape you up. You may be so fat that you haven't seen your feet in years, Still you can impersonate so much good nature that men will be attracted to you as flowers to the sun. Have confidence in everything you do, even when you eat sausages at a quick lunch next door to the dog catcher. Hell is not paved with good intentions. Hell is paved with sanctimonious pretensions. When you get up, where does your lap go? When you love, where does your hate go? After you have walked the floor all night trying to get the baby to sleep, you can at least be thankful that you do not live in Greenland, where the nights are six months long. Avoid hot words in anger. You might tell the truth. A Chicago father thrashed his son for being out late at night, then added, When I was your age, my father would not let me be out after dark. 
the boy answered. Then you must have had a devil of a father. The old man came back hotly. I had a damn sight better father than you have. Fretting is like a rocking chair. You can do a great deal of agitating in it without getting anywhere. Do not kick at the squirrel that runs up to you in the park. It may be only mistaken identity. He thought he saw a nut. Children radiate truth. They intuitively feel and express it. Elsie had been bad, and her mother sent her upstairs to talk it over with God. After an hour she came downstairs singing. Her mother asked her what God had said to her. Oh, she replied, God said, Great Scott, Elsie, don't feel badly. There are a lot of worse people in this house than you are. End of Chapter 4 Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 5 Supreme Bodybuilding Method Health, Harmony, Power, Service That is what a supreme body gives. Do not always be taking care of your health. Take care of your body, and you will generate health. Thought animates the body with health. This is an age of electrification. We are fed, lighted, heated, and transported by electricity. In the lightning pace we are going, the body is neglected. Give three minutes morning and night to the exercises below, and you will straighten, develop, heal, and energize your body. Enter these exercises as you would an arena of conquest where you expected to win the great prize of life. The breath is life. Take a deep, full abdominal breath with each bodybuilding exercise. Inhale through the nose and expel forcefully through the mouth. Never hold your breath. First exercise. Stand erect. Drop hands to the side. Clench your fists tightly. Then with muscular tension, raise fists and arms slowly high above the head, taking a deep, full abdominal breath as you raise them. Relax and expel the breath forcefully through the mouth. Repeat five times. Second exercise. Place the left hand flat in the right. Clasp them. Resisting with the left, lift with the right, putting full strength into the effort until the hands are lifted above the head taking deep breath as in the first exercise. Relax, expel breath. Then repeat with the right hand resisting the left. Repeat exercise five times. Third exercise. Grasp the hands firmly above the head, letting them be at rest on top of the head. Then pull hard from the right to left slowly taking the deep, full abdominal breath with each movement, relaxing and expelling as above. This and the above exercise are wonderful in their effect in developing the lungs and rounding out the development of the shoulders and chest. Repeat five times. Fourth exercise. Grasp hands in front, level with chest, pull from right to left hard, taking deep, full abdominal breath with each movement. Relax and expel breath, same as above. Fifth exercise. Grasp the hands behind the back, taking deep, full abdominal breath. Lift the hands as far up on the back as possible. Relax, expel breath. Always draw in the breath as you move through the exercise, having a full breath when the movement is completed then expel. Sixth exercise. Place right hand over right hip, clench the left fist, raise it slowly, drawing the deep breath and bending the body to the right as far as possible. Relax. Expel breath. Now repeat with the left hand placed over the left hip. Repeat five times. Seventh exercise. Grass hands in front of breast, pulling hard. Swing the body as far right and left as possible,
without moving the feet. Take deep breath with each movement. Repeat five times. Eighth exercise. Raise hands above the head. Take a deep breath and bend the body. Try to touch floor with finger, not bending the knees. Repeat five times. You can add other exercises to these, only be sure they have the deep breathing. These will build a vigorous, developed, supple body. Will ward off every form of asthma, catarrh, bronchial, or lung trouble. Stop indigestion, increase circulation, renew and make blood. Do all exercises in well-ventilated room. Have clothing loose. The best time is on rising and on retiring. If they make you ache at first, it is sure evidence of their doing you good. You will soon be too strong to have aches and pains. Do not exhaust yourself in the exercises. Just take them till the body glows and the muscles are well exercised. Faithfully persist in these exercises and breathings. Marrying a goose does not assure one of a bed of swans down. Never ask a man who gave him his black eye. Nobody gave it to him. He probably had to fight hard for it. When discussing the modern dress, keep in mind that a bare statement is not necessarily the naked truth. There is a difference between notoriety and merit. A thousand dollars worth of roses will barely fill a room with perfume but with a dollar's worth of fried onions, you can send up a whole town. The American people lose three million years every twelve months by being sick. The doctor's fees amount to a billion and two hundred and twenty million. Wonder what the master of life meant when he said, I come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. End of chapter 5 Recording by Andrea Fiore Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 6 Supreme Internal Vibrations Good digestion rules the world. Digestion is a matter of vibration. Indigestion is on the increase because people are more and more sedentary in their habits. Walking is life's finest exercise, but people walk less now than ever. The human body's greatest vibrator is the diaphragm. Arouse it, and you will arouse action in your digestive tract, your liver, and kidneys. Continue vibration from one minute to as long as you please. If these vibrations are continued a few minutes each day, no cancer or tumor would develop and the thousand different stomach ills would disappear. The diaphragm is a great muscle area stretched out for the stomach, intestines and vital organs to exercise on, and to give them freedom. Vibrations for the intestines. Begin slowly. Take a deep breath. Then vibrate your abdomen in and out by using the inner muscles of the diaphragm. Vibrate slowly then more rapidly. Force the vibrations downward upon the intestines. You may feel a little pain at first, which shows the weakness of the intestinal muscles. That passes away. The diaphragm is the great digestive engine of the body. Work it all you can. Vibrations for stomach and solar plexus. Raise the vibrations upward just as before you force them downward. Repeat the series with full breath several times. Also give the vibrations a little twist of the body so as to get the circular movement over the stomach. Vibrate the solar plexus with short sharp vibrations far up into the chest. This will cover the muscles of the lungs and of the heart. This is a very essential work as it gives new strength to those muscles of the heart and lungs to ward off acute tacks of any kind. Vibration for Torpid Liver Direct the vibration to the right side. Do them strongly so as to arouse the liver thoroughly. 
This is a very important exercise, as it bears directly on rheumatism. It increases the acids, starts secretions flowing. Rheumatism calls for dry climates, non-acid diet. Avoid sweets and starch. Take salt water baths. Drink lithia water. Walk all you can. Change your work. Be sure to drink a cup of hot water each morning on rising. Put a little salt in to help cleanse the stomach of septic acids. Drink two cups, all the better. Constipation. The best vibration and advice is that above for this trouble. Be regular about going to the toilet each morning. Eat vegetable diet, rye bread or graham. Eat little meat. Chew your food to a liquid mastication. Keep up the intestinal vibrations. In 20 days your constipation will be a trouble of the past. Headaches and biliousness. These are the results of auto-intoxication. The worry, hurry, eating fast, eating too much, overexerting, anxiety. All of these poison the process of digestion and assimilation. Take a dose of Epsom salts, castor oil, or cascara sangrata, then regulate your diet. Rest in bed for a day. This done at once will save many a siege of sickness. Obesity. Keep up the internal vibrations all over the body. Keep up the exercises of Lesson 7th. Reducing is a moral resolve to eat less. If you are a coward, you cannot reduce. If your appetite, that is unreal, unnatural, and dangerous, makes you its slave so that you eat 5,000 units of food when 3,000 is a great sufficiency, then you lack moral will force to reduce. Drink the hot water as above or put it into a little lemon juice. When you feel hunger come on, drink a cup of the lemon hot water, just a few drops of the lemon juice. Get so you can go without your noon lunch, except one half slice of bread and a cup of hot water, one quarter milk. Keep up walking. Keep up the bodybuilding exercises. Rub and massage the face and neck. Do not eat fat, pastry, confection, or starchy foods. Eat slowly. Fletcherize each mouthful. It will reduce you, give you a new taste of flavors not known to the glutton. Abhor being fat, unshapely, and be unhappy over it, but never tell others how you feel. Keep your deficiencies to yourself. Master them. Be free of them. Then living will become a joy your body a daily delight, and you shall possess a supreme personality. Have a new body. There is no condition, physical or mental, that cannot be changed. Even deformities and deficiencies can be improved. Set your mind on what you want to be, then work for it. Set a mark at what you wish to weigh, and then bravely, happily, with joyous courage, seek to attain it you will. Command your body. Keep moving toward your ideal. Health is a result of harmony. By the force of will acting in obedience to the mind is the body made perfect. You are no fool if you know how to sin charmingly. The most fertile source of family trouble on earth is an inheritance. Do not spend your life leading asses to fountains of wisdom for you cannot make them think. The life path of many people is like York Street in New Haven. It begins with a hospital, is populated with doctors, and ends at the cemetery. All nature is triune, earth, water, atmosphere. Her agents are heat, light, electricity, ether, magnetism, aura. Her kingdoms are Mineral, vegetable, animal. Her animal life is aquatic, terrestrial, 
aerial. Her formations are angular, circular, spiral. Man, her highest creation is physical, mental, spiritual. If you cannot realize your ideal, idealize your real. Sleep is one of nature's sanctuaries. An alarm clock has no more right to disturb it than a foghorn has to blow off in a prayer meeting. Be glad when you meet a crank. He may give you a suggestion that will make you a self-starter. Very few men are smart enough to fill five reels with genuine daredevil acts of villainy and get away with it by coming out an angel at the end of the film. Heart failure is largely acute indigestion from selfishness. Sunstroke is quite likely brought on by anger and anxiety, head up by relatives. Apoplexy is hate, breaking up housekeeping. Paresis is free love, embellished with champagne. Appendicitis is a six-cylinder appetite, hitched to a half-horse power ambition. Nervous prostration is a self-love movie, trying to cover the earth in a single reel. Pneumonia is vanity, overheated in seal skin. End of chapter 6 Recording by Andrea Fiore Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 7 Supreme Mental Healing the Supreme Mind The previous lessons give you the key to supreme mental healing. Your mind is limitless. Begin where you may. Conditions do not count. No matter how weak, how isolated, how deep in the mire of trouble, you can rise, you can be free, you can be renewed. You may have a whole library of all sorts of books and treaties on healing. You may have a library of biology and pathology, but you can never read yourself well. What you need is what I have sought to give you, positive working plans. It takes some work to build a hut, more to build a comfortable home, still more to build a palace of luxury. How much mind and will work are you willing to devote to build your body into a temple of the living God. Mental confusion. Make an easy plan for each day. Relax your mind tension. Let down your body tension. Eat less. Drink water. Walk in the open air. Change your thought to new plans, new work. Let go of the past. Have nothing to do with the future. Sweep aside the odds and ends that litter your mind. Let go by denying them any place in your mind. Talk with strong people. Leave weak, useless people alone. Take a salt bath by going into the ocean or in your own tub using a full pint of common salt. Do not tell your troubles to another. Help another in trouble to get out, and you will get out yourself. Make new plans. Worry and fear. Ask yourself this question. How many things have I worried about and feared ever happened to me? You will see how few, and only those you attracted. Worry is lost energy. It is like a rocking chair. Keeps going but never gets anywhere. It is like a mill owner starting all the machinery of his mill, then going away leaving it running to injury and destruction. It is a miserable habit. It makes you and others near you unhappy. It destroys your usefulness, injures your health, kills joy. Quit the habit. How? By forming new plans of thought, work, expression, activity, and living, only one day at a time. Stop resisting, struggling, let go of selfish purpose and start loving. Make a change. Start new. Grow something. Make something. Laugh when you think you are going to cry. 
depressive moods. Dress in light colors, pink, lavender, green, red. Get away from browns, blacks, and dead colors. Try blue if you are nervous. Eat very lightly. Walk till tired. Take the salt water bath. Not hot, but cool. Stop self-pity. Change your surroundings. Even if all you can do is to turn your bed around. Seek new people. Make new plans daily. Nervous troubles. Build your body with my lesson fifth. Take plenty of nourishment. Sleep in the middle of the day. Simplify your daily living. Keep away from sick and unhappy people. Stop talking about your own trials. Let go. Drop fretting over trifles. Check selfish desires. Go afield with the sheep and cattle. Do not let your housework make you a slave. Plan some new outlet. Do something different. Banish anger. Forget self. Help some lame dog across the street. Borrow a poor child and go out to the zoo. Lift up someone who is down. Do strong things. Avoid excitement. Keep out of the crowd. Check strife and antagonism. Get the happy habit. Think one thing at a time. Let that be a pleasant thing. Insomnia. Retire loving the world, letting go of self. Drink a cup of hot water, quarter milk, with a bit of salt. Relax mind and body. Say the word, sleep, just with the rhythmic swing of a clock pendulum slowly. You will sleep. Be rid of habits. Quit making excuses for the habit. Stop lying about its being hereditary. Resolve and you are free. Keep away from the cause of your habit. Shame yourself when you commit it. Praise yourself when you master it once. Destroy the desire of your habit by putting a good desire in its place. Stop buying tobacco or drink and buy flowers, music, or a farm. Rouse your will. Severely call yourself to account when you slip. Stop talking about how you suffer or how hard it is. Talk about the victory. When you are tempted, sit in silence ten minutes and say, I am supreme. You will win over any habit that you may have. Change your position. Change your work. Change your associations. Drinking and smoking are the major habits that enslave men. The moment you become disgusted with a habit, it loses power over you. When you get moral courage enough to hate it, it will flee from you. You may conquer it in five days, or it may be five weeks. Just set aside a vacation of that time and fight a battle for supreme manhood. Have confidence in yourself. Arouse your will to splendid self-mastery. Have a motive for being rid of your habit. Have enthusiasm. Be determined not to travel through life loaded with a kit of bad-smelling smoking tools. Smoking does not stimulate nor aid digestion. It does not clear the brain nor soothe the nerves. It is quite the opposite. The same is true of the liquor habit. A habit is a deficiency. It is a vicious enemy that mars and defeats supreme personality. We become like the things we think. Retire from business every night. Start in business anew every morning. It isn't the mountain ahead that wears you out. It is the grain of sand in your shoe. All life is divine, limitless in sensation, supreme in expressions. Get life, get well, get strong, get wisdom, get expression, get in love. And men seeing your good works will glorify your Father which is in heaven. End of chapter 7 Recording by Andrea Fiore 
Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 8 Supreme Power of Magnetism Our Magnetic Monochrome You can prepare your own magnetic monochrome by careful study of the colors which most influence you. These will vary with the physical temperament of different people. The primary healing colors are crimson, scarlet, dark blue, dark green, lively yellow, violet, and purple. The primary inspirational colors are light blue, pale green, rose, pink, lavender, lively red. From these you can form your monochrome of almost endless results. It is wise and best to select and use just those colors which will give you the greatest intensity of vibration. Once you have found your responsive and sympathetic colors, those grouped together form your magnetic monochrome. Magnetism is the highest form of physicalized power in the universe. It knows no resistance. It passes through all substances and pervades all space. It is the most vital power in the universe. Our modern life presents a magnetic paradox. It affords the greatest development of magnetism and is the greatest destroyer of it. It is generated by the brain, flows to the right through the body in the form of a figure eight. From the brain to the solar plexus, across to the left side, then down to the procreative organs and through to the right side, and up to the solar plexus again, and through to the left side, and up to the brain. The solar plexus is the body's great life center. Personal Magnetism Keep steadily cultivating magnetism, or your supply of human electricity. The solar plexus is the great sympathetic center of the nervous system. Keep it aroused and active, and you will increase your magnetic forces. Sensation, emotion, and intensity of expression rise from the solar plexus. Magnetism is generated by brain forces, focalized by thoughts. The nerves are the medium of transfusion. Colors increase the vibrations. The moist palm of the hand forms an electrode when applied to any affected part. The brain, by thought, starts the magnetic currents of healing force through the arm into the part treated. Let your eyes rest on the color of the monochrome used. The current will then be complete. By practice, you can greatly intensify the healing thoughts and so increase the flow of magnetism. While giving yourself the treatment, or to others, breathe deeply and regularly. Have the body relaxed while treating, better lying down. Have your eyes on the color. Also, if treating another, have them look at the same color. Mental Disorders In all mental disorders, like hysteria, grief, distress, fear, melancholy, Select that color from your monochrome that most soothes your particular temperament. It may be light green, or yellow, or pink, or one of the blues. You will soon be able to quickly tell which gives the greater relief. Use only one color at a time. You will find that, after a little, you can summon to your mind the color you desire without even using the actual color in the monochrome. In case of injuries, in case of injuries, swellings, inflammation, local pain, apply both hands where possible. Have the palm of the hands always moist. To start the process of thinking that will arouse the magnetic currents, think of the affected part as well. Think of the pain as leaving. Now in treating the heart for palpitation, think of it as quiet as strong. Praise the heart for its wonderful endurance and power through the past years. Think of the strong abounding heart of an ox or moose, and think that strength into your heart. 
that your heart is like it in power. You will see a decided improvement. Use the colors of the monochrome in such cases as will give you the best vibration, the color that best responds to you. Try the red, violet, blue. Most heart troubles are not troubles at all, but troubles of digestion. Give attention to diet and keep your intestinal tract clear. Treating the eyes and ears. In all troubles of the eyes and ears, apply the hands over the eyes, letting the palms rest firmly, but not pressing upon the eye, with the fingers up over the forehead, of course having the eyes closed. Also treat with one palm over the eye and the other at the base of the brain. Use the colors of the monochrome that give the highest intensity of magnetic response. The purple, violet, blues, and green. In treating the ears, do the same. Place the palm on each side of the neck. Also treat the throat with both palms and with single treatment of one palm. It is not necessary that both hands be used at once, but it increases the force to do so. Treating the Solar Plexus Treat the solar plexus daily by resting both hands lightly but firmly over the pit of the stomach. Use the colors crimson, dark blue, violet, and purple. Untwist your solar plexus by cheerful thinking. Get new life force into its withered and neglected condition. Invalidism is only a withered solar plexus. Cultivate laughter to arouse it. Work at laughter until you sweat profusely. Do the same by walking and other exercises. Stimulate life in your solar plexus, and you will return to youth. As I have said, the solar plexus is the great magnetic center. Keep it actively healthy. Bathe it with sunshine. In treating the kidneys, place the palm of the hands over them flatly, and use the colors as above. Treat the stomach and liver with the same colors. Also treat the lungs. The length of time for a treatment can vary from two minutes to any length. Oft times, the soothing effect will induce sleep, as placing the palms over the temples for nervous headache. The more you develop the magnetism, the more readily will the effect be accomplished. Provoke an evil and you produce it. The place to feel for the poor is in your pocket. A kiss is something like gossip. It goes from mouth to mouth. Chewing gum is like worrying, a useless waste of energy. Keeping close tabs on the calendar and clock induces the creepy feeling of old age. Have nothing to do with useless people. You cannot get wool by shearing a hydraulic ram. The mothers of America will in a near by day reset the cornerstones of this republic. Never stop a man running with a hat box in his hand. It may be his wife's hat that he is trying to get home before the style changes. Dress youthfully, keep out of shadows, love the sunlight, fresh air, the world, and the people in the world. Live for others. Let the howlers howl, let the growlers growl, let the scowlers scowl, and the geegaws go it. You keep in the light, be brave in your fight, you'll win all right, and I know it. Anonymous End of chapter 8 Recording by Andrea Fiore Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft Chapter 9 The Supreme Law of Telepathy Life is Spirit The Spirit of Man is the Candle of the Lord. Just in the degree you think and exercise your supreme nature will you know the power of the Spirit. Spirit is the essence and manifestation of life. Through it you shall realize, shall experience, shall see, shall know, shall live. His ministering spirits go to and fro 
through all the earth, doing his good pleasure. Nothing can come except we attract and draw it. Nothing can stay with us when we let it go. All are made one by the Spirit. You are an enthroned being. Around you are forces of the Spirit waiting to do your bidding. The moment you attract them, the windows of the universe are opened, and the power of the Spirit is poured upon you. It is everywhere. Its glory fills the earth, radiant in the glories of the sunset, shining in the soft light of the moon, gleaming in the lovely stars, waiting to minister to your needs, to fulfill your desires, to comfort you, to restore you, to endow you with power. You are of the Supreme Spirit. The Law of Telepathy It is a supreme law whereby one soul may reach and minister unto another soul. It is spirit manifested through thought waves. It is magnetism spiritualized. It is a mystic wonder of spiritual manifestations. It inspires visions, dreams, premonitions, and through vibration of wave thoughts gives universal communion, soul companionship, to the children of light. To use the law, sit in silence, relaxed, Summon a mental picture of the person you wish to reach. Get clearly as possible the actual presence in your mind. Then begin to send the wave thoughts by repeating impressively to yourself, or aloud, the message of your code. Never try to do this when tired, exhausted, or excited. Think intently on the message and your desire to reach the mind of the person you wish to aid. Students should practice both sending and receiving telepathic messages and influences daily. Never think that the will, condition, or temperament of the person to whom they are directed will retard, obstruct, or destroy your work. Act in supreme command. Put all the intense force of your will into your wave thoughts. Magnetic ethers will be your messengers. You will likely get a direct response in a wave unison, or it may come later, after your work is done. The student should bear in mind, also, that they may and should develop original work, make new and personal codes. The purpose of codes is to unify the wave motion and keep the mind intense. Beware of selfish purpose, revenge, hate. These are the destroying angel, sure to return to you. Telepathic Code for Healing I bring you healing. You are supreme over all bodily conditions. You shall not suffer. Pain shall leave you. Strength is thine. You shall not die, but live. Perfect good is in you, and you are a part of it. I see you are well. You are delivered. You are uplifted. Arise and walk. Go forth to thy desire. Every organ and function of your body is full of health. I see you as a part of the Supreme Life whole, active, happy, strong. Telepathic Code for Guidance No evil shall befall thee. You are safe. Fear shall not assail you. You are greater than all dangers. You shall have light with you. Wisdom shall be a lamp to thy feet. Courage shall illumine you. Faith and hope shall be close to you. You shall not be deceived. You shall prevail. That which you seek shall be revealed unto you. Your heart's desire shall be granted. You shall not err. You shall reach your aims and shall achieve your purpose. Telepathic Code for Success All power is yours. You are supreme. Wealth, possessions, friends, position, and happiness are for you. Ways shall open before you. Opportunity will be revealed to you. Bright possibilities shall be made manifest to you. You shall see an open door. Abundance is yours. 
power to supply your needs will be given to you. Doubt shall clear away, leaving you free. The eyes of your mind shall be filled with light. You shall be guided to plenty. Telepathic Code for Friends All ways are open between us. I am calling to you. My soul and mind are open to you. No wrong shall endure between us. The springs of kindness shall be open to us. I am listening to your spirit. We shall be led into truth, love, and happiness. Our love is perfect. We shall not err. You hear the voice of my wish for you. You know my mind. All promises and truth are perfect. All is light. There is no darkness between us. There is no distance or obstacle between us. Your mind answers to my mind, your heart to my heart, your soul to my soul. When tempted, I am near to withhold you. When disheartened, I will inspire you. Day and night are the same. You shall not falter. Our vision shall be made real. Our desires, heart longings, soul hunger shall be satisfied. Our future hope shall be actualized, our destinies realized in the pavilions of silence. Your life and my life are the radiant units of the life perfect. Build the world with thought waves. The dire curse of this world is idleness. Some are working too hard, while a vast multitude idly look on. Don't be a looker, be a doer. Don't be a knocker, be a booster. Idleness is a sin. The wages of sin is death. That is why people who stop working soon die off. If a man will not work, neither shall he eat. He can't eat long. He loses his appetite, spoils his digestion, gets heart failure. When you retire from business, from work, from active aggressive occupation. You want to buy your lot in the graveyard at once. If I were rich, do you say? Stuff and nonsense. If you were rich, you would be unbearably meaner than you are now, a hundred times more stupidly useless. What you need is punch. You have lost your grip, grit, and punch. And no matter if you are ninety years old, you can get them all back. How? Listen. Build the world with thought waves. Begin with your world. What is it? The kitchen or the schoolroom? The ditch or the mayor's chair? The field or a superintendent of a railroad? A brickyard or a bank? A bench or a pulpit? A loom or grand opera? A pick or a pen? Take a look at your world. What is it? Now plan it, then breathe life into your plan. You cannot help others until you help yourself. You cannot save others and not be worth saving yourself. You are supreme, and this is your ultimate hour. You are under the law of liberty. Go to your own, free of all outward restraints, forms, commands, and laws. You are an absolute unit of God power in the universe. You shall be judged only by this law of liberty, the best in you and the highest good of others. Use this personal code as you work. Personal Code I am power. I am life. I am energy. I am fearless. I am strong. I am free. I am success. I am well. Faith is clear, bright, shining within me. I shall be guided. I shall be given wisdom. I shall triumph. That personal code, given ten minutes a day, will double your power of efficiency in six months. Stick to it. Each day drive it harder. Bring out your abilities, insight, courage, daring, and boost yourself. Energy is something you generate, just as the dynamo generates electricity. 
Start your mental and physical dynamo. Freight thought waves with your desires and send them out. They will come back richly laden for you. Load your smiles, heart throbs, good wishes onto thought waves and send them out to serve others, cheer others, give hope to others, to help others across the hard places. They will come back bearing to you some thirty-fold, some sixty-fold, and some hundred-fold. Happiness comes through loving service. The student should have faith in the work entered upon. It is founded upon law and fact. Some day the law will be made fully clear and operative in all departments of life. The wireless telegraph is a step in the demonstration. Recently, a young woman in Elizabeth, New Jersey, was awakened by thought waves after all medical applications had failed to arouse her from a six days sleep. An acquaintance of the author's was warned by thought waves from his mother to avoid danger. He was so deeply impressed that he delayed a day, his western trip, and so missed the train that went down at Ashtabula. A husband who was some miles distant transacting business, received the thought waves from his wife that she was in danger. He hastened with all speed and found his home in flames. A young lady felt the impress of thought waves from a young man to whom she was engaged and decided not to join a boating party. On the return trip, the pleasure launch took fire and six of the party perished. A whole volume could be filled with most interesting cases of positive results of telepathy or thought waves. But let the student begin and test the marvels of this mystical power. Never squeal. Live with, stand by, die for your friends. The seventh circle of hell is reserved for squealers. The last word. Start now. Get thee out. Launch out into the deep. Darkness shall be a pavilion around you. Angels of light stand by your side. This supreme hour is yours. Set sail. Realize yourself as supreme, infinite, immortal, then divine. Crown with glory your individuality. Now are we the sons of God. Limitless life, boundless capacities of power. Shut your eyes to the flesh. Shut your ears to the world. Shut your heart to fear. Shut your soul to hate. Stick to the chase until you get the trophy. Search for the holy grail and tell true love's untiring ministry, the cup in your unselfish hand, sparkles and flashes in the crimson and sapphire glory of your quest. Burst from your chrysalis of doubt and the supreme wings of the spirit shall sweep you forward to triumph. There is no gloom in God's universe except what we make ourselves. The skies sparkle with possibilities, calling you into their glowing fields of power and service. Get passion into your chilled soul. Master fate. Span the universe. Hurl forth the thunderbolts of your energy, and the mountains of difficulty will be cast into the sea. Take your place in the sun. Stop rivaling God by saying you are a worm of the dust, a miserable sinner, and that there is no good within you. Quit damning yourself. Nothing is impossible. You hold the key to the universe. Mind is supreme. Thought limitless. Weave your spirit out of sunbeams. Seize the glittering stars, and they will become your chariots. You and the universe of God are one. Today is eternal. This shining moment is everlasting. Lift your eyes to visions that gleam through the purple clouds of loveliness, from the matchless forms of beauty, and you shall see the invisible. Listen to the voices that unseal the velvet lips of silence, and you shall hear the inaudible. Put forth your supreme hand unto dominions, principalities, and powers, and you shall do the impossible.
If you wish time to go fast, use the spur of the moment. Women were never so attractive, never dressed so beautifully as now, and they never wore so few clothes. Blame no one if you are unhappy, for every law, force, and influence in the universe is for your harmony and happiness. Use them. Cheer up. You are all right if you are bald-headed outside, if you are not bald inside. Remember, Samson did his biggest killing after he lost his hair. Your bald head is like paradise. There's no parting there. Your teeth may be out, and your hair may be thin, yet there's many a good tune in an old violin. The optimist sees the doughnut, the pessimist sees the whole. The pessimist asks, Is there any milk in that pitcher? The optimist asks, Will you please pass the cream? A pessimist is a man who winds an eight-day clock every night. An optimist is a man who gives his clock away so as not to lose any good time winding it. A pessimist is a person so disagreeable he won't eat anything that agrees with him. An optimist is a person who can eat a cottage pudding so agreeably that you think he is enjoying a brownstone palace on Riverside Drive. God give us men. A time like this demands strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and ready hands, men whom the lust of office does not kill, men whom the spoil of office does not buy, men who possess opinions and will, men who have honor, men who will not lie, men who can stand before a demagogue and damn his treacherous flatteries without winking, tall men, sun-crowned, who live above the fog in public duty and in private thinking. J. G. Holland The author of these lessons has been a student of psychotherapy, mental suggestions, and the laws of personal power for 28 years. During that time has lectured extensively in the United States, and by direct and indirect personal advice has helped many thousands of men and women to overcome severe forms of mental, physical, and personal conditions restoring them to active usefulness. If your friends cannot secure these lessons of their bookseller, have them send direct to the author, enclosing 25 cents coin. No person among all the millions of the earth can make you unhappy, except yourself. My new method of mental induction and personal advice and instruction develops four psychic forces let me help you solve your difficult personal problems, situations, or conditions. I can aid you to be free of mental confusion, distracting circumstances, and entangling difficulties. I will help you to open new paths, create new conditions, obtain new visions, and achieve a positive mastery. A world of new realities, rich opportunities, brilliant possibilities awaits your gifts talents and abilities. You may and should have success, happiness, harmony and love. You possess sources of dynamic energy, intuition and inductive power. Your age does not matter. You can start anew. State your case clearly and briefly. I will also answer for you five questions upon personal matters concerning which you may desire specific information, advice, or guidance. Your confidence is kept inviolate. Through my new method of mental induction, I work for you and with you daily for the full realization of your desires. My terms are $2 in advance, your money back, if I fail to help you. Write your name and address clearly. Address, Dr. Croft, New Haven, Connecticut. No power on this earth can keep you down, if you will to rise. Smile while you can, young man, for some day you may marry your employer's daughter and become a millionaire, then you can't smile. The devil laughed over time when he inspired the alarm clock. There was once a man who found a fat white grub eating his cucumber vines. He did not swear over it, but took it out to sea 
and caught a scad with it that supplied food for himself and family of nine children for a whole day. That is initiative. End of chapter 9 Recording by Andrea Fiore End of Supreme Personality by Delmer Eugene Croft